So today let's take a look at another main voltage LED. This time it's this tiny tiny one. It was for $1.50 including shipping and here you can see some keywords and it says 30 watts. Seriously, such a tiny LED, 30 watts. And it's cool white and it's 19 by 19 millimeters. And it's ceramic. All the other ones are on an aluminium substrate, but this one is on a ceramic substrate. Here is the LED and it really says 30 on it. Can this really be 30 watts? It really is 19 by 19 millimeters and it seems super tiny to me. It has two terminals on it and it seems to be marked neutral and live. And it seems to have a lot of LED chips in it and some other semiconductors. Four semiconductors here. Is it diodes? Is it a bridge rectifier made of discrete diodes? Basically just bare diode chips with no package and some other chips, probably some current regulators. It really seems quite tiny to me. It contains a lot of LED chips in it. It's like the other LEDs, it's blue chips and a phosphor over it and it seems super tiny for mains voltage for 220 volts and 30 watts seems completely crazy to me. It has blue LED chips in it and the phosphor which generates the rest of the spectrum and the color of the phosphor suggests it's a cool white LED. Do you trust it 30 watts? Is it even possible? Given the number of LED chips in a series, it could handle mains voltage, but 30 watts? Isn't it crazy? But anyway, let's try to test it. It's so tiny that soldering a mains cable on it seems crazy, so let's put a thinner cable on it and then join it here. It looks very tiny, very fragile, but let's try to solder the wires on it. Let's thin it. I'm a bit afraid that the tracks can come off. And it's soldered. But let's try to run it with a resistor in series first, just for case. 15 kilo ohms. So let's try to test it at a very low power with 15 kilo ohm resistor in series. And it lights up. Seems nice. And of course it flickers horribly in camera. And here you can see some pictures of it and it seems like it has 72 LED chips in a series which is the same as those LEDs. It seems to work nicely so far but now let's try to put it on a heatsink and run it at its full power and measure the power. It doesn't have any holes for mounting screws, so I will just put it into a blob of heatsink compound, basically. Way too much as usual. This is a dirty job. Let's secure the cable using a sticky tape. Just for the test. And let's connect it with no resistor. Some makeshift isolation, of course. Just for the test. And does it explode? 3, 2, 1. Wow! That's quite bright. And no explosion. And now of course let's measure the power. 34 watts? Bloody hell, such a tiny, tiny LED. 34 watts. That's crazy. It really is over 30 watts. I was expecting it to be just mislabeled by the seller and I thought it could be like 5 watts or 10 watts maybe at most. Now let's try to compare its light output with the other LEDs using my solar cell. And this LED is also 30 watts nominal and it's about 29. And this LED is also 30 watts nominal. And actually it is 28. 
So I have my solar cell connected to my current meter set to 20 milliamps and let's compare the LEDs. This is my tiny LED I'm testing and it produces about 1.3 milliamps. Now the 30 watt LED from the recent video produces about over 2 milliamps, the best so far. And my 30 watt LED from a bit older video is only 0.7 something milliamps. And here you can see the currents and some calculations. Here you can see the current it produced in my solar panel and the current per watt. And here is the relative efficiency compared to this one. This one is the most efficient, so I calculated the relative efficiency compared to this one. And this LED has only 53% of the efficiency of this one and this one only has 38% of the efficiency of this one. So this LED comes out as the most efficient one. And this one is the worst one. And now let's try to run this LED for a bit longer. I'm still a bit suspicious it's going to blow up because it's super super tiny. And let's also keep measuring its light output to see if it doesn't wear out quickly. Now it's 1.26 milliamps. And in the meantime let's try to take a look at its schematic or let's actually try to guess the schematic because it's not easy to see what's inside. But it seems to be very simple. The mains comes in, there is a bridge rectifier with no smoothing capacitor, so it runs on a rectified mains with no smoothing. And here you can see 72 LED chips in a series with the total voltage drop about 216 volts, given that each of them drops about 3 volts, and some current regulating circuitry. And this current regulating circuitry is probably just some chip or maybe several chips in parallel. It looks like it's just the bare chip or bare die with no package directly on the ceramic substrate. Or several of them in parallel probably. And it all runs on unsmooth rectified mains. Which looks like this and it flickers because it only lights up when the mains voltage is higher than the voltage drop of the LEDs. So from here to here and from here to here it's on and from here to here and from here to here it's off. And the current regulating chips are just constant current linear regulators so it's lossy. And this area represents the power dissipation in the current regulator and this is the power of the LEDs. After about two hours still no explosion and the light output went down by about 15% from 1.26 to 1.10 milliamps. And the heatsink is quite warm but still not too hot to touch. The light output went down but I have a feeling that the power also went down. It probably reduces the power as the temperature goes up. And after it heated up the power is 30.6 watts only. So the power goes down with the temperature. So the conclusion is that this LED works but I'm not sure how long it can last. I really don't know how it will do in a long run. And it's quite tiny so the heat sinking is quite tricky and it doesn't have any mounting holes. So how do I put it properly on a heat sink? I would have to put the screws over the edges like this but it's ceramic so it could crack. I would have to use some heatsink glue that can hold it in place instead of just a heatsink compound. But nevertheless it's probably still not worth it because of the efficiency. This one is much better, it's this one. This type of LED and it also is much easier to put on a heat sink because it's big and it has mounting holes and it has more LEDs in parallel so if one goes out it will probably still work. There are really huge differences in efficiency between those cheap LEDs. But it's definitely better to pay a little bit more for a better efficiency LED because you save electricity and you also save on the heat sink because you can get the same light output with less heat dissipation. And the efficiency kind of correlates with the price. The worst LED was $1.30 including shipping. 
This one is in the middle and it's $1.50 including shipping and the best one cost me $3 including shipping but I recently found it from another seller for $2.40 including shipping, which is quite good. But this tiny LED could also have some other uses operated at low power. You could run it in a series with a resistor or in a series with a capacitive dropper to use it as for example a night light or some low level illumination or some backlight or illumination of some switch or some indicator of mains voltage or so. It can have a lot of uses at low power. If the power is low enough it doesn't even have to have a heat sink and of course this capacitive dropper doesn't have to have an inrush resistor because the inrush current is limited by the current regulating chips. Those current regulating chips basically now just limit the inrush and then they have no effect because the current is limited to a lower level by this capacitor. And this type of LED comes in multiple power versions and the lower power versions are even smaller and the price of it is according to the power from about 70 cents to $1.50. Including shipping of course. I will probably use this one as a night light run at low power and this one has the best efficiency so far so I will probably choose it to build my high power light for my videos. And I'm also trying to figure out how to reduce the flicker of it. And here's my cat of course. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And I also plan to take a look at even more main voltage LEDs like this one and some other power versions of this one and also this night light with a USB charger from Lidl supermarket.